Fake Lays Kickoff Show continues live from Super Bowl 30. Once again, Greg Gumbel. Back in Tempe, Arizona with the Doobie Brothers playing in the background, we get some closing thoughts beginning with Jim Gray. Jim. All right, Greg. Well, several Cowboy players and the training staff paid very close attention in the pregame warm-ups to Rod Woodson. They're very unimpressed. All of them told me they don't think he'll be a factor at all. He's very slow and very tentative. In fact, the Cowboys today, they don't feel they're going to have a problem at all. Will? Okay, Jimmy, I talked to Bill Cowell a few seconds ago. I said, what are your themes for your team today? He says, offensively, no turners. turnovers. Make Dallas earn everything. Defensively, you've got to be physical on the line of scrimmage and with their receivers. Next, Chris Collinsworth. The only place the Pittsburgh Steelers match up is in their four wide receiver offense. The Cowboys too big, too strong. I like Dallas in a blowout, 40 to 14. Bob Trophy. Yeah, Chris, I think there is a easy formula to beat Dallas. That's stop the offense. I don't think you can do it with a uh, 34 defense of Pittsburgh. I like Dallas big. Well, let me say first, I don't believe in the Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny, or Santa Claus, but 95 has been a season of surprises. I like Pittsburgh. I like Pittsburgh late on a Cordell Stewart touchdown. You know, everybody talks about winning this football game, and nobody talks about losing it. But let me tell you, it is a big blow to lose in the Super Bowl. You can't take any comfort in saying there's only two teams here, or at least we got here. And I speak from experience because I've been using those two statements for 20 years, and it doesn't make me feel any better. Joe? Well, I'm kind of with Randy. I'm looking down the road at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Number one, I think they're going to take Michael Irvin out of the game. They're going to let that number two rush defense work on Emmett Smith. And I'm going to pick the Steelers. Coach Gibbs? I tell you what, the classic matchup. The Cowboys, the great big guys, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, the little fast guys. I think we're going to have a ball game, but I think it's going to go to the big guys. Mike? I think work ethic and special teams are going to decide the football game. And the other area that Chris Collins worked at the Steelers do match up are special teams. They've got great coverage teams. They'll need them today. 27-21, Pittsburgh. All right, Mike, this is the trophy for which they are playing today, the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Two things are very certain. The team scoring first in Super Bowls is 21-8. and eight. The team leading at the end of the day is 29-0. and 0. We are closing in on Super Bowl 30, the great American party which brings us all together once a year. Here's a look at some of the players who may become Super Bowl heroes by the time this day is through here in Tempe. After another, that's Plymouth. And by Pizza Hut and the all-new triple-decker pizza. Have one delivered today. Boys and the names are legend. Pittsburgh's acrobatic receiver Lynn Swan, an MVP winner. Quarterback Terry Bradshaw then passed his team to a second victory over Dallas. But more important than who won is the character of the men that took the field in those games, men that continue to distinguish themselves. Franco Harris, as a player, he hammered defenses. Today, as a prominent businessman, he watches his modern counterpart, Emmett Smith. He dominates the way Franco did. As you admire quarterback Troy Aikman's leadership and courage, you can't help but recall cowboy great Roger Staubach, now a highly successful CEO. Receiver Lynn Swan captivated crowds with his spectacular ballet-style catches. Now a sports commentator, today he'll marvel at another number 88 explosive, Michael Irvin. Cringe as Pittsburgh's linebacker Greg Lloyd targets the enemy. In the 70s, it was relentless Randy White. Today, he cowboys at his own ranch. All-pro Carnell Lake volunteered a new position to fill a void left by injury. His selflessness brings to mind the Cowboys' Charlie Waters, now a coach at Oregon. As the times have changed, so have coaches. The stoic Tom Landry, a contrast to today's emotional Bill Cower. The evolution brings flamboyant, multi-talented performers like Deion Sanders and Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback slash receiver Cordell Stewart. Today, 
we cheer a new generation, acknowledging, appreciating the talent of men destined to become tomorrow's heroes. Today, legends will be built in Super Bowl 30. Here are the mathematics, Super Bowl 30. Millions will watch around the world, including our men in uniform and women in uniform in Bosnia, and we hope you enjoy the game today. And yet, less than 100 men will decide the outcome of this game, and the winners will join San Francisco, winning a record five Super Bowls. The man who has been down in the tunnel, awaiting his name to be introduced at the start of a Super Bowl, Bill Sims, take us there. Well, Dick, I tell you what it's all about. It's about tension early in the football game. As a player, you always dream, what's it going to be like to stand in that tunnel? Well, time's about 10, and then you have it. And a story that illustrates that, in our third play of the game in 1987 in the Super Bowl, I go in the huddle, I look at all my teammates, their hands are on their knees, they're hyperventilating. That made me nervous. We go to the line of scrimmage, I look over at the defense, their hands are on their knees, they're hyperventilating too. I tell you what, I feel a lot better after that. <laughs> now, there is a common denominator. Ron Earhart was your offensive coordinator. He'll be calling the plays for Neil O'Donnell today. Tremendous plus for Neil O'Donnell. Ron Earhart's been there. The good thing he did with me, he got me off to a good start. He has to do that with Neil O'Donnell. Get a couple easy completions, make him think positive thought. He'll play better, and I think that's important for Pittsburgh to have a chance to win. Well, make no doubt about it, this is a Super Bowl fight, and the heavy favorites are the Cowboys by two touchdowns. Well, it's like a barroom brawl for the Pittsburgh. You know, if you've ever been in one, you, you see the, the toughest guy in the room and he picks you out, you know he has a reputation. You don't dance with this guy. You go up and smack him in the mouth, and that's what they have to do off Offensively and defensively to the Dallas Cowboys. You know, when you sit there and look at it, they think they have their offense down. I don't think so. The Pittsburgh Steelers have some other things in there. Defensively, Dallas thinks they have all the blitzes down. So you don't because they put some more in. And I talked to Ron Earhart, the offensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers the other day, and I said, you know, you were on Super Bowl teams. What is the best team we ever coached? He says, this is it. Better than any of those. And I'll tell you why. Because if you tell these guys that they can't do something, they're going to do it. Well, everyone has an opinion of how and when and where this game will be decided. We ask one of the stars of Super Bowl 30, uh, or at least projected to be one, Deion Sanders. Primetime set. The key today is if I catch two passes, one on offense and one on defense, the Cowboys, as projected, will win again. They're waiting in the tunnel. When we return, the starting line.